Welcome to lecture number one. Today we will discuss the origins and definitions of privacy. The word privacy is found nowhere in the Constitution, but has been inferred to exist from several of the original Bill of Rights, including the First Amendment, which protects the right to anonymous speech, the Third Amendment, which protects the privacy of the home by preventing the government from requiring citizens to house soldiers in their homes in times of peace, and the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. The concept of privacy was widely recognized in a famous Harvard Law Review article written in 1890 by Samuel Warren, a prominent Boston lawyer, and Louis Brandeis, who later became a justice of the United States Supreme Court. The article was written in the context of an increasingly sensationalist press, so-called yellow journalism, which focused on reporting about prominent members of society in lurid detail. Warren reportedly was the subject of several articles by the Saturday Evening Gazette in Boston about his lavish dinner parties. Warren and Brandeis described the privacy right as, quote, the right to be left alone, end of quote. The right of privacy defies a single definition and has been defined in many ways over the years by various commentators and courts. Many of the definitions overlap each other, but may be summarized as encompassing the following rights. The right of solitude. This is Warren and Brandeis' famous formulation of the right to be left alone. People need to be insulated from the world and others on certain occasions. This is a form of preventing trespass to one's physical, emotional, and mental world and causing injuries which Brandeis argued can be more harmful than bodily injuries. The right of intimacy, which is simply the ability to control or limit access to one's intimate relationships or information. This is the basis for protecting activities in the home, relationships with loved ones, and medical information. The right of secrecy, which addresses the ability to conceal certain information or matters from others. This is often related to the right of intimacy, but is grounded on the belief that there is value in preventing disclosure of certain types of information, even if not intimate. For example, what organizations one belongs to or what videos one watches. The right to limit access to the self. This is the ability to shield oneself from unwanted access by others. This formulation of privacy underlies the current concerns with geolocation tracking. The right to control information about oneself. This formulation is perhaps the most all-encompassing definition and speaks to the ability to determine what personal information is shared with others. This is at the forefront of the modern controversies over data mining and tracking of Internet activities. The right of anonymity. This concerns the ability to speak and associate with others without identification. This right is also grounded in the free speech guarantee of the First Amendment and implicates current controversies such as use of opaque Internet usernames and fake Facebook pages. Privacy and how one defines and protects it in an age of information abundance is taking a front and center position in our national debate. We live in an Internet-driven and mobile device world, a world where consumer profiling, pervasive surveillance, big data information systems, and biometrics, coupled with an ethos of sharing through social media, has enabled government, businesses, and individuals to monitor our everyday lives and to collect, aggregate, use, and sell personal information on a scale never before imagined. Some say privacy is dead or on its last death rattle. Others say privacy is alive and still highly valued and that we are merely entering into a time where the contours of privacy are being reshaped to reflect our changing world. Whatever the case may be, 
the next few years will witness some epic and fierce battles between the competing values of privacy and transparency. These battles will be fought in corporate boardrooms, in our national and state legislatures, and ultimately in our courts. Before discussing the emerging issues surrounding the right of privacy, we must first, however, understand the existing analytical framework that underlies the right. The legal touchstone of the modern-day right of privacy revolves around answering the question of whether an individual, in light of the specific circumstances presented, has, quote, a reasonable expectation of privacy, end of quote. This legal formulation is the subject of our next video.